Hey YouTube nerds, Alan here. I don't know if you've seen this video, but about a year ago, this crazy Ukrainian YouTube channel supposedly made a microwave gun out of three microwave ovens, a tin can, and a stun gun, and it's got like three million views now. And in this video, they're literally blowing up electronics and stuff with it, and I don't totally buy that this is real. We should see if this is possible, because if it is, it'd be super awesome. So today, we're gonna make a microwave cannon. Oh look, three microwaves! These two microwaves we got from the thrift store. This microwave here I found on the side of the road like a couple months ago, and I'm pretty sure they all work. The part of a microwave that actually makes microwaves is called a magnetron, and that's what we need out of these. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> Gross! Ah! Oh! We gotta do this outside. Oh! Gross! Oh, are you recording? Okay. That's as close as I can get. That's fine. Don't hit the camera lens. Sometimes it makes a big spark and it's scary. It's what? not now, so. This is the magnetron. This is the part of the microwave that actually makes microwaves. There's a filament inside, sort of like in a light bulb, and that's heated by these two wires. This third wire here puts the filament at a high voltage and shoots electrons off of it. The electrons shoot this way, but these two magnets make sure that the electrons actually spin rather than going in a straight line. And that actually generates microwave frequencies that are transmitted from this antenna. Can this thing actually be powered by a stun gun and some vape batteries? I don't think so. Here is our first test setup. Now we're only going to use one magnetron at first just to see if anything happens at all. But before we get started, I've got to talk about this mobile game called War Robots. Because let's be real, they're paying for this. War Robots is a tactical 6v6 multiplayer game where you collect and fight giant friggin' robots. It's a mobile game with great graphics and a huge community of over 50 million users. If you click the link in the description, you can start playing War Robots right off the bat with the GI Patton, a very powerful bot, along with a sweet custom paint job, four upgrade machine guns, 400,000 silver, and 100 gold. It's actually a huge bonus to start the game with. So make sure you click the link in the description and start playing War Robots today. Okay, this is my best guess as to how the parts in the original video would have been laid out. Now I can tell that they're using 18650 LiPo batteries, otherwise known as the batteries used in vapes, to power the filament of the magnetron. For the high voltage side of the magnetron, we have a stun gun connected to a spark gap set to go off at about 5000 volts. And again, that's roughly the voltage that the magnetron would be seeing in the microwave oven anyways. Here's the problem. A magnetron in a microwave oven is going to be drawing hundreds and hundreds of watts. Whereas this stun gun can provide maybe like 14 watts. Now, if anything happens at all, we will be able to see it because we've got a fluorescent bulb set up here in front of our tin can waveguide. So if any microwaves come out at all, the fluorescent bulb should light up. Stun gun is armed. Filament is heating up. Single magnetron powered by stun gun in three, two, one. You see that? <laughs> I think it's actually, it's actually glowing a little bit. <laughs> it looks like we're actually generating some microwaves, which <laughs> I am actually pretty surprised by. I have now mounted all three magnetrons along with adding a beefier battery to the stun gun and this big honking horn antenna in the front made out of poster board, aluminum foil, and tape. Now this certainly looks like some kind of post-apocalyptic Ukrainian EMP weapon, but unless there's some kind of weird radio interaction that happens, I don't know if three magnetrons is actually going to be any better. But either way we're going to find out because as far as I can tell, this is the exact setup used in the original video. So if this doesn't work, then I think we can safely say, myth, not true. Here goes nothing, three magnetron part of my stun gun in three, two, one. I don't see anything. Do you see anything? Wah wah. Let's just literally take the light bulb and just shove it in the very back of the horn antenna. Let's just see if we can get anything to happen at all. Stun gun is armed. Test in 3, 2, 1. Hey, check that out. <laughs> That's actually doing something. 
bulb just has to be literally inside of the cantenna. It all just comes down to power. There's just not enough power coming from that stun gun. Even in brief pulses of high voltage, there's just not enough juice to actually do anything significant. No matter how big your horn antenna is or how many magnetrons you stick in there, it's just not going to do anything. I do think I have an idea though that might improve this setup just a little bit. This is a high voltage capacitor that I took out of one of the microwave ovens. I've connected it to the stun gun in parallel, and that means this is going to store a little extra energy in between the spark gap firing. That also means the spark gap is going to fire less often, but now when it does, there's going to be a little extra current, and hence a little extra power going to those three magnetrons. Here goes nothing, stun gun with high voltage capacitor, and three magnetrons in three, two, one. Oh! You see that? Ha! Ah! Finally! So, our new and improved microwave cannon can now light a fluorescent bulb up to two feet away. But not any further than that. On the plus side, we do actually get those lovely interference patterns on the secondary camera up to five feet away. And if we bring the camera any closer than that, it actually reboots and stops filming. So, not much of an EMP, considering the range is 5 feet, but maybe this will actually explode something. We gotta give it a try. <laughs> nice. Calculator at 2 feet and 3, 2, 1. Oh! Ha! Whoa! <laughs> well, it didn't go boom, but I don't think that calculator can do math anymore. <laughs> Next up, the humble alarm clock radio. This actually plugs into the wall, so if anything's going to explode, it might be this. The classical music connects us to the past. Ugh, I hate pledge drives. Alarm clock radio, point blank. so much for that support. Firing in 3, 2, 1. Well, at least I can hear some interference, but I don't think anything else is happening. Whoa, 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 okay. Filaments off. Sun gun. Oh, whoa! <laughs> wow! Did you see that? It actually caught on fire and exploded! You know why? Because I stuck fireworks in there. <laughs> and then I set them on fire, and hopefully through some clever editing, it made it look like the microwave cannon actually did that. It did. Yup, I cheated. After shooting the radio point blank for several minutes straight, it was pretty clear it was never going to blow up on its own, and in fact the radio never stopped working. This microwave cannon is simply not powerful enough to do this. Why you want to... I think that pretty much does it. You can actually take apart three microwaves, a tin can, and a stun gun to make a machine that'll shoot microwaves. It's just not going to shoot them very far, and it's not going to be strong enough to explode mopeds or stereos or anything like that without cheating. Those Ukrainian guys definitely know their way around electronics though. What I think happened is they built this microwave cannon and it just didn't have enough of an effect for the video that they wanted to make. So they sprinkled a little YouTube magic over it to get the content that they were looking for. If you watch closely, you'll notice that there's a lot of panning and cutting going on in their video whenever they fire this thing, and that gives them plenty of opportunities to edit and cheat. Tell me why you think I'm wrong in the comments below, or show me a viral video with some questionable science that you want to see me test. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and hey, thanks for watching. Oh, shh.